the mirror. You can say it five times. You said it five times. Nothing happens for a second. And all of a sudden, oh, dude just starts spitting up blood and he's getting gutted from behind my candy man. <laughs> Welcome to the Third Generation Wrestling Podcast with your hosts, Eric and Rob. His name... Right? Candyman. It's just a story. Candyman. Just a... Ghost story. Candyman. <laughs> All right. Welcome back, everybody, for the not quite the final horror movie review we're gonna do, but we 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 don't, it's Halloween. When we felt right that we we squeeze one more out, and this, after all, was the ambassador's choice. Sticking with Clive Barker here, talking some Candyman, the real biggie, and Rob the ambassador. How's it going? It's good. Happy Halloween to all the listeners. I know this is a popular holiday for people. It's going good. Uh, did you get uh, Did you get a lot of trick or treaters or no? No, man. You know what? We don't get many on this block. Uh, no, I di- didn't get any actually. <laughs> Wouldn't answer the door if uh, if we did. I just don't. I just I don't answer the door. But they don't. But luck. Like, I sound bad saying that, but it's um it's not because no kids knock on the door. Oh, well, I didn't, it just seems like it's a dying, dying, uh, uh, thing. Like it's not as popular as it used to be. Yeah. I wonder if COVID or something has to do with it now. People just aren't, I don't know. It's just, just like you said, it's just not what it used to be on my block. There aren't that many kids, but there are enough where I would think maybe we'd get at least a couple of knocks, but we, we don't get none. Yeah. It's crazy. Cause um, even when we moved to this neighborhood, it was, I mean, the first year I would say it was all right, but last year it was kind of dead. Like, mm. Mm. and and then today they told me how it works. So I missed it, but they they wasn't that busy this year either. Mm. Weird. I wonder why that is. Anyway, oh well. Uh, but throwing it back to 1992, talking Candyman. Starring Tony Todd and Virginia Madsen. Um, now, I know they made three of these things. I've never seen any other two. Uh, have Me you? Either. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, this was one of those I just stuck with the original. Never even been curious about the other ones. Um, uh, for those that don't know, uh, Clive Barker also. Uh, he didn't direct this one, I don't think. But he he, he uh, this was also one of his... He wrote this story. It was in one of his books, the Book of Blood, I believe. And uh, yeah, this this uh, it was it was actually kind of about his upbringing. He kind of grew up poor, and he kind of wanted to tell a, a story, but talk about you know how uh, different different uh, ethnicities are treated in America. They're in different classes, you know. But that's how that's why he used Cabrini Green. Here in Chicago, which was real, um, I think it was de- it was demolished in the. It's been it's been torn down for a long time now. They you they they really did shoot at Cabrini Green. They had to have police there all the time. There was there was I think only I think one person got shot during the shooting. Um, the studio. Oh, damn, you not- make it sound like <laughs> that's not a bad thing. <laughs> only one person got shot. <laughs> <laughs> ain't supposed to get shot on a movie set. Well, no one did. <laughs> Unless didn't. you're filming with uh, Alec Baldwin. Oh God. Um, or you know Brandon Lee. But hey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, stuff does happen. But wow. But it wasn't. It was. It was. You know, gang. It wasn't. It wasn't anybody on the set. So I got you. I got you. Um, they pretty much had to, but how the how they kept more things from happening. They just told. The gang's like, hey, we'll put y'all in the movie as long as y'all start no trouble. It'll, it'll add something to it. But uh yeah, very real. Um it 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 uh uh I guess in nineteen ninety two I would have <laughs> I would have been five years old. <laughs> 
But uh, I do remember seeing it in in the mid '90s, and it was very Tony Todd, especially, just had that voice. They will say that I have shed innocent blood. What's blood for, if not for shedding? With my hook for a hand, I'll split you from your groin to your gullet. Before I started watching it again, I've watched this movie quite a few times in the last couple of years, but before I started watching it again, I guess remember him being in the movie more, I guess, but he's not. He's not really, and I don't think he needs to be, so to speak. Um, he's a presence when he's needed to be there. They don't overexpose him, and it actually makes you want to see him, want to want to see him more, even though less is more. Um, the story is about um Virginia Madsen's character uh Helen who is uh uh I guess he's he's a researcher at this at, at the University of Chicago and her husband works there too she's working on a thesis and it's about urban legends and Candyman comes up as one of them and we get you know eventually throughout the movie we get the story of you know Daniel Robitaille and what happened to him how he was the son of a uh, I guess the guy, his, his father made made a device for shoes during the Civil War, was it? Yes. So yes. During the Civil War. So he was wealthy. So he got to go to all the best schools and he was educated. He was a very good painter. He painted a portrait of a white woman who he slept with and that led to his murder. Uh, they sawed his hand off, stuck stuck a hook in it, sprayed, covered him in honey, and bees stung him to death. And just to make sure he was dead, they burned him <laughs> and spread his ashes all over Cabrini Green. You picked this movie. Well, I picked this one because, first of all, I remember seeing it. Uh, I was 26 when it came out, so <laughs> you know, a little bit older than you was. And uh, not only did I think it was good, but I thought it was very interesting that we had a black man as the protagonist, as the uh you know we i'm a horror movie fan you're a horror movie fan we've seen any number of horror movies but seeing a black man in the lead was unique so of course i wanted to support it and clive barker having his name attached to it uh we already reviewed hellraiser and so he already had good credit with me because i enjoyed hellraiser and i was uh, looking forward to seeing this one do you know? So Tony Todd was not the first choice. It was always going to be a black man, but he was not the first choice. Do you know who who they wanted to get originally? I feel like I've heard this story before, but I do not remember. You'll have to go ahead and tell me. Eddie Murphy. Oh. Vampire in Brooklyn. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that would have worked. They made the right choice with Tony yeah, Todd, they, I think. Well, I, I like Vampire in Brooklyn. Uh, but uh, yeah, I can't see Eddie doing Candyman. Different, at all. different, different type of movie. So he said, "Well, we're gonna go with the six foot five Tony Todd, not the five foot nine slash ten Eddie Murphy." And you know, right choice. Tony Todd also had the voice and this that that presence, and 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 a lot of people, um, a lot of women especially have a thing for Tony Todd as Candyman kind of weird <laughs> that maybe it's the voice i don't know yeah, yeah could be but uh so we get the story helen and her friend bernadette they're kind of working on this uh thesis and they're they even brave enough to go to cabrini green and and and, and you know try to get the backstory she uh she meets a little boy jake and she's kind of telling him about candy man and there was a story about the little boy who got his thing cut off. Um, Didn't need to hear that. Yeah, that, I mean, watching it back, I'm like, man, that's pretty gruesome. Mm -hmm. And they're standing outside the bathroom. They're at Cabrini Green. They're standing outside the bathroom area. And it was an outdoor bathroom for whatever reason. And um, he's telling her the story of Candyman and all this stuff. So she goes in this bathroom. And... I'm sorry. There's not a thesis. There's not a study. There's not a job that could pay me enough to walk in there. And there is sweets to the sweet 
written in shit on the wall. And she, yeah, she I mean, barely and walk it's not in like there. she's and she's not even getting paid. And first of all, where did they get that much shit? Um, See, you were thinking like me. I was like, okay, who took the time? <laughs> yeah, because that was a lot of shit. That was a whole lot of shit. It wasn't like they just wrote one word. They wrote a whole damn sentence. Right. Shit. Everybody, come on. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it was thick layers of it. Across. Yeah, I could it see like, like it was not like, like smear trail. Like, it was like yeah, like yeah. caked on there. Right, right. Yeah, nasty. Yeah, but uh, and she, we, we find out that Candyman is. Uh, 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 just the leader of a gang. He got a hook for not a hook for a hand, but he uses a hook. And uh, yeah, tax out that that blow to the head. I like how they cut it real fast. But if you really pay attention, he whacks her in the head, and has that blood spatter real quick. Mm-hmm. Like oh, and then, <laughs> then you yeah, see her, her eye was jacked up after that. Yeah, you see her at the police that, station. That next scene in the police station, her eye was messed up. Oof. So essentially. What she did was she killed the myth Candyman. And she she said, you know, she told Jake, oh, he's not really just a gang gang member. He took the moniker and, you know, it's not real. Yeah. I think one thing we probably should mention is that something happens when you speak into the mirror, when you oh, say Candyman's yes, yes, name yes. five times. And earlier in the movie, uh, Helen was uh, with her friend, played by Cassie Lemons. I can't remember what her name was in the film. And they were in the mirror, and Helen actually spoke the name five times. Uh, Cassie's character did not. So I think what befell Helen later in the movie was mm. because of speaking his name five times early on in the movie. Yeah, because uh, you're right. Because they were in that apartment. She was explaining how the Cabrini Green apartments work, and they had them in the mirror. He had to say Candyman five times. Bernadette was like, mm, no, nah, I ain't doing this. <laughs> And uh, yeah, but Helen did. You're right. That's how they were connected. Um, so after all that, we see Helen walking through her car in, in the parking garage, and you see Candyman standing in the back, poised. And that's the West when you first hear him for his voice. Helen. He, he pretty much tells her like, "Yeah, you, you, you messed up because now, because I'm only, I can only be here if people know about me and I'm spreading my name and that's how I get strength. And you telling people I ain't real, can't have that. So, not sure how it happened, but she gets mesmerized by him walking towards her, and she blacks out and she wakes up in uh uh." Anna Marie, that's her name. Yeah, Anne Marie. Anne Marie's apartment, who was somebody, one of the residents that she met at Cabrini Green. And her baby's missing. Baby Anthony. And the dog's head was cut off. I mean, clean off. <laughs> and she's covered in blood. Anne Marie throwing And it wasn't fit. no little poodle or nothing. It was a no, Rottweiler. Rot- yeah. yeah. Anne Marie's throwing a fit. Where's my baby? You took my baby. And then Helen gets arrested, but it's kind of a like her story doesn't make sense, but they're trying to say, well, it was the dog's blood that was on her. But it didn't look good when, you know, she did strike Anne Marie with that meat cleaver in the shoulder. And 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 you know, they come in and she's like this. It's like, what you doing? Right. So. But since the baby was missing, they couldn't charge her with murder. They were hoping that if she would tell them where the baby was and the baby was okay, that, yeah. you know, they, yeah, but they couldn't really get murder on her because the baby, so, the baby so for sure was dead. So now she's suspect at the very least. Everybody's kind of like, mm, but the story don't add up. And Bernadette had came over to try to work on, uh, um, the project some more did didn't she oh no she went back to cabrini green didn't she she was back home and bernadette was coming over to right. helen honey it's bernadette let me in he's here 
because he came back and he 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 meant he did it again because he killed Bernadette. Mm -hmm. And the way it was filmed, she didn't really know what had happened. She just wakes up, this knife is in her hand, and then she looks over and... Oh, my God. There's Bernadette just, just gutted yeah. and slaughtered. Yes, that was... Uh, see, that's one of those images you see as a kid, and you just go... Yeah, and that, it and was, that was effectively you. well done, because she was so drained. I mean, her, her skin color it had was gone gray. pale. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, it was, it, it was filmed really well. It was a really intense scene. This whole movie... Uh, I hadn't watched it in a long time, and I forgot how intense of a movie it was. It was really, really well done, really well paced. And uh, how they had Helen, you know, under the spell of uh, Candyman and getting into all these really terrible situations that she, you know, you can't explain that, oh, there's just some invisible man putting me to right. sleep and murdering the people. And then I, you know, yeah, it was all really intriguing. Yeah. Um, and he, he Candyman doing all this to just try to get, it's a funny theme with Clyde Barker. He's got a thing for this. The character needing to get their strength back so they can get, they have a goal and they need something to keep, you know, like with Hellraiser, Frank needed to restore himself. Candyman here needs people to talk about him so he can be, you know, still be a ghost. Um, so this time she gets arrested and he's charged with murder. And that, that same detective, he ain't so nice no more. <laughs> he's in there. He's in her face, slamming on the table. He is pissed. And uh, now she's, I guess, psych, you know, psych ward. And, and her, I mean, first of all, her husband had the nerve to sit at the crime scene. He's just sitting there. So while she's handcuffed, he's just back there smoking a cigarette, just like hand in his palm. Why are you acting like you care? You you already messing with the the, the young college student. You just you, right. you, you, you probably internally is happy to have no good. I, now I got now I got excuse. Right, but you're right. But you got to put that front on. But man, but I mean, look, it did look bad. I mean, it looked really bad for Helen. The yeah, I mean, he probably she, thought, oh, she's going away forever. She'll never yeah, get out. Yeah. But uh. Then we got that. Now that <laughs> I don't know about you. So she's in this mental home. She got that session with the counselor in his office, and she's trying to prove it. I, I can prove. I can prove he's real. And she looks in that little mirror. I do like how it doesn't matter the size of the mirror, as long as it's a mirror. You can say it five times. You said it five times. Nothing happens for a second. And all of a sudden. Dude just start spitting up blood and he's getting gutted from behind my candy man. <laughs> Reason why I laughed was because he's standing behind him. He's like <clears throat> Well, man, yeah, he started from the bottom and just yeah. working his way up. Yeah, man, he he just tearing dude to pieces. Yeah. Well, he said in, in the opening, I'll split you from your groin to your gullet. Yeah, that's exactly what he did. And and then uh, they're banging on the door trying to get in there. And then he, I like how he escapes, kind of letting her get out. You know, he busts through the back window. Mm -hmm. the way he left i thought that was really great had to suspend a little disbelief because i'm sorry but if you got an escape inmate and she's you know i would think that somebody would look up and go hey <laughs> but no she got out and got all the way home and i guess this is like a month only a month after she got arrested and she gets home and apartments being painted and there's a new woman in the house and she's just like, Oh, okay. I'm going to remember this, Trevor. I'm going to remember this. 
leaves. And uh, I guess we also mentioned that earlier this day, uh, Jake had mentioned that there was going to be this big bonfire. And, you know, Candyman, the reason why he, and the other reason he's at the Helen is because she's pretty much his love interest when he died. She's pretty much his love interest when he died, reincarnated, essentially. So when he sees her, he sees his first love. And I like how they had that one room in, in the Cabrini Green that was like uh, graffiti with his mouth and all that stuff kind of mm-hmm. told his story. And that's what she saw yeah. that. And it kind of showed his murder as well. Um, but at the end of the day, now, so now this is this this is more so about the baby, baby Anthony getting him back. Candyman says he has him. And I'll, I'll give you the baby, but you got to come with me. That's, that's the lie he told. He said, I'll, I'll, I'll switch life for life but you gotta come with me and i'll give the baby back not true his plan was to oh, we all are gonna go in that fire and we're gonna die together and we'll be together eternally one big happy family because I, I think of the story that he impregnated that that woman i don't know if that's that's true yeah that yeah i don't know for that actually they had that scene with helen candy man and the bees um, those are real bees. Yeah, man, that was nasty. Yeah, they got had them all in the mouth and all everything. In his mouth. They they had a they put a uh, it was a dental a dental dam in his mouth so none would go down his throat. But yeah, bees in his mouth, and he had it in his contract. I'll do it, but I need a thousand dollars for every bee sting. He got I don't know 20. if Virginia Madsen got the same thing because she had bees in her mouth too. Yeah, I don't know. But he he had in his contract a thousand dollars for every bee sting, and he got stung twenty-two times. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Just in that scene. Wow. So you know, in what... some of the in some movies I've heard where they use bees, they have bees with the stinger removed, or I think there's certain gender of bees that don't have stingers. I wonder why they couldn't do that. Just Letting people get stung. Only the females have them. Okay. I guess they couldn't get no male bees. Or not I'm, enough. Just like um, only female mosquitoes bite you. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there was that scene. I thought that was that was incredible. And so so now, yeah, doing the bonfire, baby Anthony's crying inside. She can hear him. She crawls into the fire going to get the baby. And He's in there somehow. I don't understand the rules of Candyman. How when he, he picks and chooses when he can appear and, and be and be real. Cause that's pretty much what happens. I believe she stabs him and then you know she crawls out of the fire and he's it's collapsing on him. And maybe because he was so believed in that he was able to, you know, fully be present in the scene. I don't know. She crawls out the fire. Fire's going up. He dies again. And Helen rescues the baby, gets it back to Anne Marie. And I like the realism in this. She dies from her wounds, those burns. Yeah, there was no way. I mean, yeah, her hair was that. burnt off, man. That was a really intense scene, man. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I like how they don't even like tell us, they just show us because the very next cut is her in the casket and uh, her funeral. And only like a handful of people there at first, but then all of Cabrini Green shows up. And I was like, yeah, I represent. And, you know, Amory's carrying baby Anthony and they kind of just all pay their respects because she saved, she saved the baby. And, you know, and they wasn't... also had Candyman's hook and threw it in the grave along yeah. with her. Just, right. I guess, as a way to say, okay. The, it was you know, close. I like how they did that because it bounced religion. off the casket and they yeah. showed her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't be right. Got tied all up. Says so Trevor. <coughs> Trevor, the ex husband. They show him. Now he's got this young girl that can't cook, doesn't want to do anything. And now he's all sad because Helen's gone and he's looking in the mirror and he says her name. You know, not like people saying came to me. It's kind of like just Helen, 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 Helen. 
Man, when I saw that in the movie theater, the first time he said Helen, people started clapping and laughing because they knew. Oh, they did. They picked up on it. Yeah, they knew he was going to keep saying it, and they kind of knew it happened because, you know, he wasn't a very well-liked character because all through the movie, we all suspected he was, you know, hitting that young uh, co-ed. Yeah. Says the name five times, shuts the light off, and Helen appears, and she, what's he say? What's the matter, Trevor? Uh, I forgot the other line, but then she just guts him. Mm-hmm. And we fade to black and credits roll. Classic, classic movie. Love this movie. Um, yeah, Clive, Clive Barker. I mean, he he really did have a thing for his imagery and practical effects. It's just a lost art. That's just everything nowadays. If you if you, you know you watch the newest Candyman, also a good movie, but CGI, CGI bees. Um. <laughs> I haven't seen the new one yet. I'll, I'll check it out. I've heard it, it's good. Yeah. Okay. I've heard mixed reviews. I, I, I'm always like, why mess with the classic? You know, if they a movie was bad before, I can see why you'd remake it. But why remake something that was already great? The thing I like about the new one is they don't try to redo this one. Oh, okay. this one is canon. So this is like a sequel. What the new one is, hmm. okay. uh, I won't say how they do link the two movies won't say how it's very very unique how jordan peele did it i like how he did it um and it makes it it, it almost makes candy man makes more make more sense so i do okay. applaud the movie for that i'll it's, check it out jordan peele's make me a little nervous with some of his movies he but, didn't direct uh, this one though i know no he did not he just was the producer on it yeah it was it was it, and i like yaya I Nia De Costa was the lady's name who uh yeah Directly. I like Yaya Abdul Mateen. I thought he did a great job. And there was some practical effects in that movie too, with him, especially. So, and there was some gross moments. I won't say what because you haven't seen it, but definitely. Ugh. But uh, with the bees, the bees are CGI. But everything else was 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 practical. And the, and the kills are pretty unique in that one <laughs> and very okay. graphic. <laughs> I will check it out. I think it's on HBO Max. Not sure. Uh, it might be. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna buy that one. I'm gonna buy this that one. It's worth one. buying. I, I mean, if you're telling me it's worth buying, I might price it on a. It, it, it me, I, I think I enjoyed it. Um, All right, I'll ch- I'll check it out. Maybe on DVD, maybe not Blu-ray, unless I get a really good deal. <laughs> All right. Well, um, your pick. What would you grade? Candyman, 1992. You know what? Candyman for me is. I'm gonna go A minus. But man, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Uh, I I enjoyed it much more than Hellraiser because the material obviously is a little bit more relatable to me. I thought the story was Mm -hmm. a little more coherent, easy to understand. Mm -hmm. I thought it was very well photographed and and the acting in this movie. Virginia Madsen was spectacular. Tony Todd, as you said, in the small role he had, just intimidating and scary. Um, The supporting cast. I thought everything about this movie was top notch, and and to me, this is a an absolute classic. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there. Which I'm giving it an A straight up. Um, I thought the acting was really well done. The score has a is this is an iconic score. How the movie opens with that that uh, like opera almost, and then even the piano score is something I've always tied to this movie. And you don't really get that a lot with horror movies, but they have like a more uh, harmonizing uh, score where it's light and kind of melodious, but also makes it creepy. But every, I think every slasher should have their own theme. You know, Michael Myers has his theme. Obviously, Candyman has his. And uh, I don't know, Fred, I think Freddy has one. Uh, but Jason, you know, you got the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah. It's an A for me. I, I love this movie. I could watch it like anytime. I watch this movie. If it's on, I'll I'll sit down and watch it. Um, yeah, I, I think the only, you know, there were a couple of things here and there, just film wise. But like you said, it was it was yeah, it was definitely better than the Hellraiser. Easier to follow. Uh, though I did enjoy Hellraiser. Obviously, I picked it. But you know, 
but this was just and I did too. And then having a black man as as the lead actor, so yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, well, maybe one day when you watch the new Candyman, we can talk about it. Um, be yeah, happy to watch yeah, it again. I, I own it. it out. I mean, I have it, but I don't have the Blu-ray. I have it, I have it digitally, but I'm a hard copy type person too. So that's just me. Um, let us know what you all think. Candyman 1992, another Clive Barker choice. Um, we love this movie. It's a classic. Have you seen it? Are you, have you, are you even old enough to know what we're talking about with this movie? Because <laughs> it is old, but it's a classic. And uh, let us know in the comments. What do you think? We've got the prediction show for Crown Jewel. We'll say Thursday. And then Crown Jewel Saturday post show will be that night. And then uh, after that, I think, yeah, Survivor Series at the end of the month. But in between there, please, please, please give us your ideas for shows, movie reviews, uh, uh, reaction videos. Uh, There'll be some more trailer reactions coming, too. But uh, October was kind of a hectic month. Now we're getting into the holidays. So probably going to be slowing down a little bit on here on 3GW because family time going to supersede the channel and then when the new year kicks off we'll get we'll ramp it back up so yeah hit us up on the social medias third generation wrestling podcast on instagram twitter podcast on called third email us third generation at gmail.com ambassador take it away all right y'all know the drill we love y'all we appreciate y'all send us some show ideas tell all your friends we're trying to build the show. We've gotten a few comments out there, and we appreciate that. Love y'all. Take it easy, everybody. Have a great week. We'll speak to y'all again soon. Peace.